Good morning, or privet, as they say here in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> We're in St. Petersburg for our last day. If you've been following our Russia series, which I will link below, you know we're here for 72 hours only. Way too fast. Without a visa. We're taking a ferry out of here later today, <laughs> so it's kind of a race against not only the boat that's leaving that we need to be on, and the weather. It's supposed to pour rain later. <laughs> we want to see as much as we can before we have to go. So we're waiting for our Uber, our Yandex taxi now, basically Russian Uber. I think it's coming down straight now. <laughs> yes, I see it. So we're gonna hop inside and get started. Hello. Privet. arrived at the Peter and Paul Fortress. Yes, and this is a really tall, skinny gold spire that you can see from all around the city center in St. Petersburg. So we've really been wanting to come here. So we're crossing a bridge, it's an island, and heading towards the spire. perfect place to start is with the monument to Peter the Great, which is just over my shoulder there, because St. Petersburg is named after Peter the Great. He founded this city, and really it all began here on this island, the Peter and Paul Fortress as it's now called, in 1703. This is where Peter the Great started St. Petersburg. And this monument has since been erected in front of the former guardhouse, and the sculptor based it on his death mask. This yellow building with the really tall, skinny gold spire is the Peter and Paul Cathedral. When Peter the Great founded this fortress in 1703, they began working on a wooden version of this church, and then in 1712, they started a stone cathedral, and it took them until 1733 to finish it. We have got our tickets, so we're gonna head inside. walked in and the first thing I always do is look up and yeah. the ceiling is painted with angels and it's pink and green. And it's got those beautiful pastel colors. Not colors that you often see in a church. No. And just covered in gold at the yeah. front. <laughs> This church is significant not only, of course, because it was the first main cathedral in St. Petersburg, but also because it's where all of the Russian emperors and empresses are buried except for two. There are 50 people buried here and 46 of them are Romanovs. And it all really started when Peter the Great's daughter died and she was buried here back when it was still a wooden church. And that kind of laid the foundation for this to be the place for the tombs of the Romanovs. And it, they're not really marked, so we got this little map to help us, so we're going to use it and just take a look around. Right up here at the front of the church, here in the front, you see the tomb of Peter the Great, and these are medals lying on the top. And this tradition of laying medals at his tomb began way back in 1803. And then beside him to the left there is his wife, that's Catherine I, and their daughter Elizabeth is the third one there, and behind her is the tomb of Catherine the Great. And if you remember the video we did where we visited the Catherine Palace, that was built by Elizabeth there for her mother. And the reason that the Catherine Palace is blue is it was Elizabeth's way of paying tribute to her mother's eyes. So interesting to have seen all of that and then see where the family is buried here. We just found the tomb of um, Empress Maria Fedorovna when we were at the Fabergé Museum. Those were some of her Fabergé Easter eggs that we saw and that were so, so beautiful. 
and the last egg, the last Imperial Easter egg that I think is called the Order of St. George. She kept that for a long, long time until she died. Mm -hmm. She loved it so much. So it's interesting now to see where she's been buried. This is a chapel where the remains of the last emperor of Russia, Nicholas II, and his family and his servants were brought here to be buried in 1998 on the 80th anniversary of when they were killed. That was really fascinating. Yeah, it's so interesting to just learn more about Russian history being here, obviously. And also to just see so many tombs in one place. Yeah, from one family. Yeah. It's pretty extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And this fortress is free to just walk around. Um, there's lots of buildings. They have a um, museum and the St. Petersburg Mint is here. Mm -hmm. And this uh, yellow building behind us was Peter the Great's boathouse where he kept his little boat that he <laughs> learned to sail on. So there's lots of things to see as you're walking around. Yeah. But we are gonna head back across the river, the Neva River. The Neva. Neva, and uh, back in towards the city center. We came down to the Neva River on our way into the city center just to get this crazy view across. It's so nice. And it's just spectacular. These yeah. buildings are all immense. And I love seeing all the colors of them all together. Yeah. And little pops of gold along the tops. Yeah. Different so churches. It's really, really something. Yeah. <laughs> spectacular. <laughs> Walking away from the Peter and Paul Cathedral, and so nice that we can just walk along the river here. There's a lovely pathway. Heading back across. So right behind us is the Church of the Spilled Blood. Such a beautiful church here. Oh. And we have been here very quickly when we first arrived to St. Petersburg and did a little bus tour, but we didn't have a chance to go inside. Yeah. We've been wanting to before we leave. So we're gonna now go inside <laughs> the church. There's signs everywhere about pickpockets, eh? I know. Everywhere. I have everything zipped into my zippy pockets. Apparently this church and the area around it is the the most pickpocketed place of uh, yeah. St. Petersburg. Yeah, yeah. Gotta be real careful. Yeah. This is not what I expected. I don't know what I expected, but it's all colorful mosaics. Oh. Everywhere, like the ceiling, the walls all pictures made with mosaic tiles. It's really different looking. This is unbelievable when you first walk in and you are just overwhelmed by the amount of mosaics in here. It's believed to be the largest collection of mosaics in the entire world. It covers 7,500 square meters and they're very colorful with gold mosaics as well and all depicting different scenes and stories from the Bible. I can't imagine how long it would have taken to place each of those tiles. I know that this took a while to build because it's also built on the canal, but also you can just imagine how much time doing this incredible tile work must have taken. And this location was chosen because it's where Emperor Alexander II was assassinated. His son wanted to build a church in that exact place to pay tribute to him, and that's also where this church gets its name, Church of the Spilled Blood. It was the blood of Alexander II that was spilled here. They 
actually have an example here of some mosaics that you can touch and you see how tiny each one is. And just imagine laying these all together in the different patterns formed here in the church. This canopy here marks the exact spot where Emperor Alexander II was mortally wounded and it's the whole reason that this church was built, why it exists. His son wanted to build it in the exact spot where his father had been wounded. And if you look down, you can actually see cobblestone because this is on the embankment of the canal and it's the exact spot where it happened. We just exited the church and right behind uh, these stones here is where that canopy is. So you can see how close the church is to the canal here. And so Alexander II was going along the, um, the canal here and then just beyond that wall marks the spot um, of where the assassination took place. You would not believe what has happened between now and the last time you saw it. It feels a little bit like we're in Amazing Race right yeah, now. Yeah, it did. We actually missed the shuttle from our hotel. I've been okay. visualizing making the boat. Okay. I think we're gonna miss the boat. 